The rush of winning never gets old, you know? Take your shoes off, gentlemen. And they'll all boil to death. Dark here! <laughs> he escaped. Tastes like new toenail fungus. Pressing both buttons as fast as you can. Where were you when I was struggling? When I was coming up! Alright everyone, welcome, welcome, and uh, we have here Vegas, Vegas Matt, Matt and EJ, Matt. his son. Thank you for coming on, appreciate you being here. So we're getting all these great gamblers, this is amazing. Yeah, th th my world's blown, so I, I, I want to know more about the gambling stuff, the slot stuff, how you guys made it, and how you guys are just on top of the world right now. Well, we're on top of the world. <laughs> no one told me. <laughs> I, wow. I see it. We can see it from down here. That's wow. what it's like when you're at the very top. Yeah, when you, you look can't up, see it like, yourself. What? Here at Andre's house. <laughs> so that's why it's called Andre's house because you do it here in your house. That's right. Yeah. I'm trying to have good posture on your couch. It's oh, that's true. Good. These it's couches. Very, we get a lot of comments about these it's couches. Very comfy couch. It's super comfy, but it's not comfy if you're like trying to sit straight. Yeah. It's like yeah. I, I, no, I just well, you get very it. conscious of these things when you get like a degree of fame, you know. Yeah. Sure, and, uh, it's really been really been fun. And is that funny. where all the weight loss came from? Yeah, the weight. You're loss like, came. dude, I'm getting famous now. I need to like look the part. Well, I was on that other podcast I was telling you about, and I, and literally there's this angle, and like what you know, kids say the darndest thing. One time, this kid said to me that you know that I looked like a frog because I had like this neck, you know. Oh, those like, guys, those yeah, haters. Such a Never cute read the YouTube kid, comments. Like drown them. Uh, <laughs> no, I didn't really. Uh, yeah, maybe, but yeah, it depends. It's like, be politically correct when you're famous. Don't talk about drowning children. But anyway, yeah, the little sh told me I looked like a frog, and then, uh, and then I was on that podcast, and there was like, you know, just like now, you got 16 yeah. cameras. You know, one of these angles, I have, uh, you know, uh, my chin was just like like this and i looked at it and i'm like oh my god and then i just from that point forward i just quit eating food. we're, we're going to use the most flattering angles yeah please yeah how many children have you chewed out in your life <laughs> just a couple just ej ej as yeah. a kid you can speak to that i don't know sometimes <laughs> just i don't know the most random things listen here come kid to mind. i was in the one time we were having a nice little family barbecue night and my friend brian and his family came over and <laughs> we're all in the hot tub and there's this one little kid, you know, I mean, he could swim and everything, and he would, but he was just like at that perfect age for throwing, you know, and, <laughs> and he was, I don't know, he was like five or six or something like that, and he was having all kinds of fun, so I like picked him up and I like chucked him out of the hot tub oh, into the pool, and, then, yeah. and it was kind of cold, and he started freaking out, and then all of a sudden, I'm the bad guy, you know, so it was oh, like th that, those couple of instances, but other than that, you know, child endangerment, my best gambling story, so... My friend Robin invites me to this poker tournament. It's a charity for St. Jude. And uh, and Daniel Negreanu hosts it every year. And, like and he's a legend. Yeah, and it's a poker tournament. And I'm like okay at poker, but not great. Like EJ's better than I am like fundamentally, but I always beat him because I have him dominated mentally. But anyway, <laughs> uh, so I go to this poker tournament and I wear a tux for some reason, because I, I, I guess it said black tie optional, but I was like the only person in a tux and a lot of people thought I was a waiter and that was awkward. <laughs> but I'm wearing this tux and I play in this slot tournament. And I mean, Mike Matisau, who used to be on TV all the time, Phil uh, Helmuth, Daniel Negreanu, a bunch of people. One dude that I know is I saw at the final table at WCP. There's a ton of pro poker players and all these people for charity, and, and, it, and it, it was X number of dollars to buy in. And lo and behold, all of a sudden, I'm at the final table. And I'm like, this is awesome. And I'm in my tux. Now Can I show a picture to the camera? Go yeah. Ahead. Sure. yeah, yeah. Is that me? So you, if, With Negreanu and all those people? Yeah. That's sick. Wow, yeah. Wow, I yeah. tried that on the other day. Wait, you, you look that much like a waiter. Like no. Yeah, that's right before now. he lost all the Dude, weight. Dude, I was <laughs> swimming in that tux the other day. I, I threw that in wow. about 80 other shirts and You are kidding. Away. You lost a lot of weight. I lost 45 pounds. Uh, but I digress. So anyway, I'm at the final <laughs> table, and here's, here's uh, Phil Helmuth, Mike Matisau, all these people. And I'm just on one of those runs the total opposite of like the last two weeks where I'm losing every day. Like, you know, it's one of those things where like every river you hit your flush, yeah. you hit your straight, you know, Oh, you look down pocket Kings. And it was just, yeah, it, I, I was just King. playing out of my tree. Lucky. I couldn't lose. And I won. And the prize was a trip to Necker Island. And I didn't know what Whoa. Necker Island was, but everyone's like, Oh, do you want to sell that? I'll, I'll buy that Wait, off you. What is Necker, Necker Island? Necker Island is Richard Branson's home. 
essentially it's like he lives on this 85 acre island in the british virgin islands you know every morning like a helicopter lands and some fancy person comes and and then they have these things called like loser weeks or something i don't i know they're called i forget what they're called but like where the general public <laughs> you know can come. come and rent a room for i think it's 35,000 a week for like a crappy room and the main house for and the then, general public yeah so like anyone can book it like you can book it through like 35,000 a week 35,000 a week. Oh, so yeah, but that, you want to be there when he invites. You got to get an invite. And they're not called loser weeks. They're called like <laughs> something nice. But they're basically, there's usually there's people rent the whole island for like a million bucks for the week. And it's very exclusive. And it's Richard and Obama and Princess Diana. Well, that was a long time ago and yeah. et cetera. But it's a very, very, very cool spot. Every night it's champagne and caviar. Tragically, one night we ran out of caviar. But like the next morning they <laughs> sent a helicopter to get more. Like, don't worry. Insane. You never run out of champagne. It's like vuv. It just flows like wine. And, and it was just amazing. But anyway, so I'm playing this poker tournament and I win this and everyone wanted it so bad I said well maybe I should take it and uh, it you was like pay 10 grand I had to pay 10 grand in taxes too so I won the tournament and then they go oh you got to pay 10,000 bucks and I'm like God, I, let me get this straight. I win ten. I win the thing. And I got paid ten thousand. But I go. It sounds so cool. I'm going. So I, 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 I book a trip and I go and I sit down for dinner and it's, and they have this table for like thirty people set up on this beautiful grass bluff overlooking the the ocean. It's, it's just like Instagrammable, you know. And, and I'm like, wow, I'm really cool now. And I sit down and then I'm talking over to the, the people on this side of me, my wife and someone else. And then someone sits down next to me on my right. And then, I, and then I turn around, and then Richard Branson's sitting next to me. And I'm like, hello, Richard. And, uh, <laughs> hello, Richard. and he's like, you're just like me. And then he was so cool. And like the dude, and then like we played tennis, you know, in the mornings and had avocado toast. He called my mom on the speakerphone. That's amazing. Yeah, and he was the nicest dude ever. And, and it was like a mind-blowing weekend that made me think. And he was telling me the story about how he started Virgin Airlines because he goes, I had a girl I wanted to go see. And... My flight had been delayed. And I was, it was tragic. Was, you know, whatever. I, I don't do a good Richard Branson invitation. And, but, I mean, it's very cool. But the essence of it was they saw some other plane over here. And he said to someone, he goes, well, what's the story with that plane just sitting there? And he goes, so I got 10 of the other lads that were waiting. And we, went, we chipped in and we chartered a plane. And I made it to my date. And, uh, and I thought, I could do a better airline. I, I mean, that was like, that's like my book summary of a that's very amazing. well-told Richard Branson story. And, yeah, and then he talked to me about the island. He said, he, he, you know, he, he wanted to buy this island and he made an offer that he thought was like a joke. He offered like $800,000 for it and and he didn't think there was any way they'd accept it and they did and then he scrambled around and found the money and now it's worth like, you know, God only knows how many hundreds of millions and um, and it was just super cool. So it got me thinking, I want to buy an island. Sure. And so this was a, around 2017 or 18 when that happened and I had a friend who was, had become an early Bitcoin miner and had like a gajillion Bitcoin. And I mean, you know, with those Bitcoin kids, you know, this kid's in like, he's like 28, 30 years old. And he's, you know, he's got like a billion dollars worth of Bitcoin and he has no idea how to spend that money properly. So I said to him, I have an idea. Let's buy an island. And so I put a deal together with Richard and we we're on a first team basis, you know, uh, <laughs> and at the time. And uh, so I, I, he had another island called Mosquito Island and it was like billionaire island. And there was like 10 15 acre lots on this 150 acre island and one of the 10 acre lots of someone there was been a death in the family or something like that something tragic and one of the billionaires needed to sell their 10 acre parcel and it was like 15 million dollars for the for the the lot uh, 10 or 15 million, I forget I think 15 and so I told my friend hey let's buy that it'd be super cool we'd be neighbors with Richard Branson and and why not I mean it's only 15 million you got like a billion what else are you gonna do he's like yeah that sounds good and so <laughs> we're all squared away to fly and meet with Richard and buy this freaking uh, one-tenth of Mosquito Island and then this freaking hurricane comes and wipes the whole damn thing out and <laughs> and I'm like Before you could buy. I'm like no <laughs> Why me? You know, like, yeah. like well, no, you you're about thankful, to do a deal right, with right Richard before. Branson. What's I mean, that? Be, they should be, be thankful. Yeah. At least it didn't happen after you bought the lot. <laughs> right. I mean, so, so the thing, the thing, the the hurricane wipes it all out, and then like my friend, like he was on such a roll, like he didn't really care. He's like, oh well, yeah, I guess we'll, we'll get him next time. And I'm like, no. <laughs> and uh, and I'm like, I want to buy an island now. <laughs> you know, and. Uh, and so we decided to look like where there wasn't a hurricane. My wife and I already had the trip booked. Like for us, it was kind of a big deal going yeah, to Richard Branson yeah, yeah. and buying an island. And so we go to Belize and 
I saw something, you know, like on like privateislands.com. I was Googling it up and I found like this island for sale and, and I reached out to this realtor and we went to Belize and just went and looked at a bunch of islands. And I found this whole island. Uh, it was like eight acres and had a staff of like 23, an amazing restaurant, boats and the docks and a dive shop. And, I, and the whole thing was only six million bucks. And so I call my buddy up. I go, you're not going to believe this. Remember, we were going to buy a lot for 15 million with Branson. The heck with that deal. I found a whole island resort <laughs> in Belize right by the reef. You can dive. It's wonderful. And he's like, how much? Only six million dollars. And he's like, well, that sounds good. So the next day he flew in, helicoptered in, landed on the island, walked around. We looked at it. He said, yeah, I'll take it. And then later on, he didn't want to be on TV or anything, but I, of course, did. So this, this TV show called Island Hunters um, on HGTV does a show about people who buy islands. So my wife and I got to be on Island Hunters. So there's like, if you ever want to watch like season five, episode three of Island Hunters, it's me walking around <laughs> saying that I bought this That's island. Cool. Well, technically I did. It just wasn't my money. You know what I mean? Yeah, right. <laughs> and, uh, but it, it was funny. We bought a second island too because it was like one nearby. That yeah, you got to have a second. Yeah. That that the first like one, one gets uh, Are you still part too. owner of that? No. Uh, I was never part owner of it. I was just the president of it. Oh. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, I still go there, but I don't yeah. have anything to do with it's it. It's unreal, that place. Yeah, it's unreal. And uh, it's a long, longer story, but it's, it is amazing. And that was fun. So yeah, I was on TV. So that's one of my better gambling stories. So it all started with winning a poker tournament. And next thing you know, you're yeah. doing deals with Richard Branson. Richard Branson. I, I thought you were going to say at the end. And then when I called my friend for $6 million, he's like, dude, <laughs> My Bitcoin's worth nothing. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm broke. Well, there was there was an unhappy ending to that whole deal, but uh, you know that's there's other stories. There was another cool thing. This was really fun. Uh, we got like really involved. You know, once you start owning an island, like the local like like there's a, there's always Italian folks in these areas. You know, the local Italian guy came to pay us a visit to find out who we were. Okay. Yeah. Very interesting things happened. I ended. Is up that like a nod to it's yeah, the mob? Or? Yeah, I, I don't know. <laughs> okay. But I don't know. Like every every one of these countries you go to, there's always a place called La Dolce Vita with some guy named you know. <laughs> He's got a few. Hey Mario, or looks like Salt Bay. Italian, yeah. <laughs> Italian name runs it in these small Central American countries. I don't know. A lot of drugs run through there. Sure. Just, I'm just guessing. Anyway, so the weird stuff happened, but but like there's a thing, and like I started getting involved in like local Belize politics, and like you know people gill net fishing and oh like gosh. killing all the fish. Got your HOA over here. There's too many lion fish. HOA. Gill net. Yeah. Yeah. What yeah. is it? You <laughs> you got your HOA on one HOA side. Over here. Yeah. <laughs> I make the same mistake. <laughs> when do you gamble? Here. You know? So it was yeah. the same kind of thing. So I always get into these things where I'm just this dorky guy just moving along and then the next thing you know I'm like got a big YouTube channel and I'm on a podcast on a couch I don't know how it happened but so I'm so I'm like yeah that gill fishing is bad you know and so I meet with like the minister of finance of Belize and then I'm like whoa you know Richard Branson you know then there's like the blue hole they're gonna take a submarine down to the bottom of it and then so next thing I know I'm in Jamaica and I got the Bitcoin guy to donate a million dollars to the Richard Branson's like save the fish but take a submarine down to the bottom of the Blue Hole Foundation and stop Illegal Fishing Foundation. And that was kind of cool. So I'm in this meeting with like Richard Branson and the Prime Minister of Jamaica and the Minister of Finance of Belize. <laughs> <Dang. laughs> That's no idea. It's funny because it, he just kind of like stumbles through these. <laughs> and just with like a lot of confidence, they very find like yourself in that situation. Yeah. Almost a Forrest Gump esque existence <laughs> I've lived. And I mean, the whole time I'm just trying to have fun. Like, I just want to get paid to gamble. Is it possible? Like yeah. I, if it is, I'm doing it because it almost never like the rush of winning never gets old. You know, tell me all the stories. So uh, walk me back because all the stories you told me that you you're retired now. Yeah. When did you retire? Well, I was trying to retire. Like I got sick of working in. I don't know. So many different times, but I mean, I didn't really you had a lot of jobs. I really, uh, had a lot, never really had a job. I've had a lot of businesses oh. and. Uh, but I just, I got to a point where I didn't have to work and I, and I have a real estate company in Costa Rica mm. and I have enough rental income where I don't have to work. Now I can't like lose 10 grand a day on my, right. you know, my passive income. But I was, I was at a point you where you didn't I have that stress level. A lot to, of people have I didn't have, have to work and there was debt. nothing that I felt like doing, you know, maybe you had since, your own UBI. Like what? 2000. 2015 probably, right? 
uh, 15, 17. Yeah, something like that. But then like in 17, like the Bitcoin thing came along and I was like, oh, this is fun. It didn't feel like work. We made a lot of money. And then, then. Well, you got into Bitcoin. In, you said 2017. Yeah. You, how did and you, you how many, with did real you guys, estate money you were buying it? I was, yeah, real estate money. Well, we bought it and then we were mining it. And then EJ became like a super Bitcoin savant. Just like now he's like, a, he knows like so much about social media. And he's so basically, I don't know, like I've been riding on my kids' coattails for the last, <laughs> since yeah. 2017. So Isn't that true, EJ? I mean, we've, we're a good team. Yeah. yeah. But, <laughs> Very nice. Yeah. Nice I way mean, to put it. See, that's good, man. You raised a good I son then. Takes care of you. It is fun. I mean, working with the son and, you know, so he really figured out like the Bitcoin. I mean, so many times he's just been brilliant. You know, like we had a bunch of money in FTX and I get a text or a call at like 1130 at night. It's like, hey, I don't remember what he said, but you're going to get a code or we need to do something. And we're moving out, you know, Bitcoin and, and you know, off of FTX at about a half an hour before the thing went you right. know, wow. down the two. you were just up on it. That huh? was lucky, and I we think. moved a lot out. And then, and then I was like, Oh, I want to take some of that out in cash. So I took like 50,000 and put it like, tried to transfer it to my checking account. And that was the only 50,000 that vaporized. What? And then what was that? Uh, there was another thing you did like when the middle the of the night. Luna collapse as well. Oh, when Luna, remember that one? Terra Luna. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and everyone was stable coin. like making money, mining. What were we doing? Sta I, I never understood. Yeah, so stable. <laughs> it was like a zero is very well, stable a number scheme in the end, but it was 20% a year on your stable coins. Yeah. Okay. So when I read that number too, I was like, wait, 20%, that's, scares the crap out of me like why yeah. would i trust 20 that makes no sense well we didn't trust it but we also wanted to make 20 percent a year sure because like DeFi platforms were paying out like 50 plus percent so 20 seemed more reasonable yeah i exactly. was doing the yeah, more the, like 50 percent yeah. returns like wasn't was, it d that was DeFi? i thought well, it was yeah it was anchor it was the protocol anchor it yeah. sounded and I, I just said okay whatever and then we put a hundred thousand or something into it and and then but same thing like because he's like always on twitter or something like paying attention and then he's like we have to take all that off and then mm -hmm. we dodged that bullet and yeah. then and then we had uh my coinbase all of a sudden one day oh yeah we got sims i i'm i'm at this wine oh, tasting i'll never forget oh. it because i was half hammered and and i and then all of a sudden like my phone's like you know your sim has changed or something like that and Your i'm like trying to use my phone and i'm like ever. no phone and then i get my wife's phone and i'm like what the hell and then i i can't check my email they changed my password and like all this stuff and they, so they got into my phone, they called T-Mobile and they had my phone number and then they just said they were me or however the hell they did it. And they just SIM swap, took over my phone, changed yeah, my Then they can do the 2FA because now they're your phone number. If you so if you don't have phone. Google Authenticator, mm. but you no, know, he has all this stuff that he was smart about. Yeah. So then they, then they tried to get into my Coinbase and then they realized that they can't. So then they sent me a text like, it's the hacker, you know, they're like, you know, uh, send me fifty thousand dollars, or I'm gonna show your wife this picture. And then I, I text back, oh, that's my wife. You know, and then I'm like, I'm like, you're an idiot. And then I hung up on them. They called me, and then nothing happened. But oh, you got lucky. probably that same prod guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah it was like it you. was like the surfer hackers because they're like, dude, it's the hacker. I'll never forget. They called me. They called me, dude. Dude, it's the hacker. <laughs> it's the hacker. So they, <laughs> like, whatever. So having 2FA on your phone through Authenticator is so much safer than using it through a phone number. Because, yeah, once they yeah, SIM swap you, they have your phone number. Yeah. So I don't know. For all, for all of Andre's users, it's like you should definitely be trying to use 2FA on your phone if you can. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know. I mean, just kind of random there. But so Bitcoin is fun. I was retired. I, I mean, I never retire. Like I'm working harder now than ever before or not harder well i'm working as hard as i ever do like i wake up and then i work until i go to sleep because because right now this gambling thing is really fun like i get to come on podcasts but it's not even work it's just what you not, like doing. No, I, yeah that's it, what i mean if it ever felt like work i wouldn't do it i had a job at uh it's your retirement dean witter i don't know if you guys like that now is probably not even a company anymore but it used to be like a big brokerage firm back in the 80s and uh, but anyway, it's like the equivalent, I guess, now of like JP Morgan or something like that. So I, at one point, I got this weak moment and I decided my entrepreneurial ventures, one of them had blown up on me, you know, so I was ha I was like, I need to get a real job. And so I got this uh, through some, some friends. I, there was a big shot with this company. I got a job in Santa Monica, put a suit on, had to get it there at like six o'clock in the morning because it's like the West Coast time. And I'm going to be like a stockbroker, financial planner guy and it was a pretty hard job to get I had to go to Century City and interview and I got the job and I finally started and the first day I went there and like my collar was too tight and 
uncomfortable and they're like here's an employee manual start you know reading about all this, what is this? crap it and sounds like the beginning of wolf of wall street yeah. <laughs> it was awful it was like the wolf of wall street and then and, and you're then an entrepreneur I, at this point so you're hating it right it's like it. feeling like you're locked in a jail cell probably I started sweating I literally felt like the walls were closing. I think I was having a panic attack. And they're like, yeah, just read this employee manual. And then at 930, you know, we'll have a meeting and talk about something stupid. And, <laughs> and at like 915, I, I'd been there like three hours. I walk into the guy's office. I got this office, I go, I go uh, his name was Nace. I'll never forget Nace Benin. And I go, Nace, I go, you're going to be pissed about Shout this. He goes, but, but I, qu I quit. And <laughs> I quit like the first day. So I've never been good at jobs, you know? Yeah. I mean, I had one job out of college, like a bank assistant manager for like 18 months. And it was just every day. It was like, I'd look at the clock, you know, and it'd be like 3.05. And then like an hour later, I'd look at the clock. It was like 3.06. And I'm like, this is just taking, every day was torture. So, so you always had that entrepreneurial spirit. Always entrepreneur. You were like, I see a problem in the world. I'm going to fix it and I can make money well, doing well, this. Well, yeah. before we even started, Go you ahead. said that when you retired, you, you already made your millions. So like you've made, your wealth like I, mean, how, I, made, I think i earned like 20 million bucks or something in my career like so that's like insane a, wait, wait wait like tell your us your whole life well, that's from cumulative. like in like 30 years so still I mean like that's mid to high six figures you know what the average is in a lifetime that a person will make in like a lifetime i give up what is it two million wow in a lifetime that's about what the typical person will you make. 10x the is typical the US person or globally i think that's us okay. so that's probably skewed towards the higher yeah, end there yeah so yeah well, I've what never, been, never so, been one to let lack of income interfere with my lifestyle. You yeah. know, like I just, I've always done whatever I want. I'll give you like another fun example. Uh, and I think it leads into, obviously people are interested in the gambling, which you know, we talk more about, but how it all came about. Like I've always liked having fun. Uh, I think it goes back to my childhood, you know, like a very <laughs> controlling mother. And, uh, and she was not a big fan of fun. And I, th I think there's some truth to this psychology crap you know uh so like like if you had a sleepover you know you had your friend sleep over when you're a kid you know and then you're having a really good time it's like can jimmy sleep over again you know and then and she's like no you had a sleepover last night i'm like is there like a one sleepover <laughs> limit you know like right. like mom explain know. to me what happened she's like we're on a roll we want we want to party for days. Forever. Yeah. she's like no you had enough fun you know and, yeah. i mean rest in peace mom Grandma, i'm trying yeah. to talk Crap, I but love she my mom. But you. she was she loved to put a throttle on the fun. Like I think she felt like you know you don't want to have too much fun. I'm not exactly sure where that came That's from. That's dangerous stuff that can lead <laughs> yeah. to children. Yeah. But it, it imprinted on me, and I was always a rebel of like I'm doing whatever I want. You question everything. I just yeah, I, mean, I yeah. question it, and I and I just don't like people telling me what to do. do you have siblings yeah. also? Are they like that? My brother's told very different than me. It's more like my more conservative, like my parents and and. Uh, I kind of blazed the trail and he kind of towed the line. I mean, he's an athlete. I'm terrible. You know, okay. I got cut from like the baseball team in fifth grade, got really mad, you know, like threw my bat in my room. I quit <laughs> baseball. I'm going to gamble. I'm so pissed. <laughs> this guy, Bob Stafford, you know, he made the team and I got cut. I thought it was bullshit. I probably dude, did suck. Bob Stafford? Actually. Dude, where's yeah. he now? You know? I think he went on to be like a pro athlete oh, or something. Yeah. <laughs> you know? He's made $20 million yeah. in the last 30 years. I'm like, dang, okay, never mind. But it's like, so I, I'm on a tangent, Andre. But, but so if I can have fun, if it's not fun, I'm not doing it. Right. So example. Some guy called me up and said, hey, uh, I'm, I started this wine club, you know, and I'd like to have you involved in it, you know? And I'm like, well, I like drinking. And <laughs> I've always, I went to UC Santa Barbara, a party school. I've always been very, very social. And so I went and I met with him and we put together this, this business plan, you know, to have like these home wine tasting events. And so I have a pretty nice home here in Vegas. And I, so I threw a wine tasting and we had maybe 15 or 25 people show up to the wine tasting and we just drank wine and talked about wine and pretended like we knew about wine. And I told people, look, if you want to come to the next party, you got to sign up for the wine of the month club. Everybody signed up. I'm like, well, that was easy. I go, how come you guys are having a hard time getting people to join the wine club? <laughs> yeah, and then ass. like, it wasn't 12 or 18 months later, we had the largest wine club in the world. And I was doing events wow. here in Vegas at like uh, Botiglia or Botia at Green Valley. Yeah, we had like yeah. 250 people there for a wine tasting. Wait, can, can you explain to me why wine tasting? Because I've been to one recently in um, California, and actually Napa Valley, we went to Napa, uh -huh. and we went to one, and uh, they gave us like this slew of like the white wines, the red wines, and I'm like sipping it. And I, I feel like I remember reading a study that was like, they gave a blind test to these experts, these sommeliers, I guess that's what uh -huh, they're called. Sommelier, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and just to give them, but some of the tests they gave them were like, 
oh, this is the same wine, but they didn't know. So it was a complete blind test. Mm -hmm. And the experts were swishing them around and they're drinking them. And it's, they had no idea that they were the same wine. Really? They're like, oh, this one is a, this one's, you know, a very fine taste or whatever. Like they evaluated that one as very expensive and the other one's really cheap. Is, is it, is it I heard sort you have of to know the price of wine to know how much it should yeah, taste Yeah, like, is it, is it real? Like, do, can people really differentiate them that much? Well, let me tell you. Uh, I can't really tell the difference. If I like it, I like it. And, right. and, and, and I would make fun of anyone who says, oh, I, I see a sense of um, horse you know, in this wine. And it's very earthy, you know. And They were wine drinking parties. They were wine. I, I changed oh, up the model to wine drinking. Everything's changed in my mind. And, and now I get it. You know, yeah. it, was a, it was a marketing. And I think it's similar not a competition to what we've, done, what we've done with the slots, but we'll get to that. But the, the thing is, is uh, sommeliers, I think, are, I'm really impressed. Like, some of them are very, very knowledgeable. And I love find, like going to Michelin star restaurants and right. talking to the sommeliers. And I think there are a lot of them. I mean, getting your, like, your level one, two, three, four SOM license is, like, harder than brain surgery. So I think there are people who aren't full of shit. I think a lot of people are when mm. it comes to wine. Um, the reality is, you know, drink what you like. I mean, a good rule of thumb is if it's more expensive, it's generally better. Right. <laughs> like I go by that, but usually I'm drinking comp wine. So I'm like, hmm, how much I got? We got 800 bucks, hmm, 200 for dinner. We got a good $600 bottle of wine. Let's try that. Do you Have find you... that some of them like pair better with certain foods? Is that Oh thing? yes, uh, crustaceans and uh, creme brulee go very good with Cabernet. You ever Ooh. stomped on some grapes barefoot? Right. There's, a place, there's a place here in town called, oh, I wish I could remember what it's called. There's a place here in town where you can go and you make the Is wine. Called, you bottle it? Or no. no. Oh, I wish I could remember. It's really cool. There's this guy like the Nutty Professor guy wears like a white lab coat and you and a bunch of friends go. Take your shoes off, gentlemen. <laughs> you take your shoes off, you stomp the grapes, what? you bottle it, you come up <laughs> with a amazing. name, a label. Uh, oh, maybe we'll put in the comments like what heaven. the name is. Because I'd love to give the place a plug. It was, and we make... We, a group of friends, we go and we make a, a, a barrel of wine every year there at this place. It's right here in Vegas. It's really, oh, really fun. That so we can get, really cool. Can we, yeah. can we buy it? Vegas Matt Wine? You could, it was Vino de Moro. Oh, much more Moro. fancy. It was yeah, Vino de Moro. Okay. We've got different vintages. Three sevens. Yeah, yes. like you stomped on these grapes. You're going to drink it yourself. <laughs> yeah, dude, you can charge a lot more for that. <laughs> got, Remember like when Grandma's still in like his bath water? It's like fungus <laughs> to me feet. a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> but, so anyway, like, we like to have fun and oh, I had something intelligent to say about what we did with the slots. We don't need anything intelligent. Okay, so like the distinction like most wine tasting parties people are trying to pretend like they're snobs mine were just fun drinking just get hammered have guys. good good people together get hammered <laughs> right. have a good time and everyone's like that was awesome i'm joining the club and, and you then, wondered why it became the biggest one yeah. in the world I mean, it was not, we, I, we we got like fifty thousand members or something like that it was huge then all the owners oh. just turned into complete alcoholics and it just it was just a nightmare <laughs> and then that thing unraveled but it was fun did you sell the concept or what <laughs> happened to it i wasn't an owner i was just i was just the marketing guy I and i made you know, I probably made a half a million bucks or something for the year doing Jesus it, and, and uh, what? it was fun. Was and it all like I did was drink. It come like a percentage of sales, okay. yeah. So, uh, but with the slots, I think we did a, a similar thing. Is made it different. You know, we saw something that was working. Obviously, there's the OGs like uh, Dan, the, the Vegas Vegas Low Roller, and like Brian Christopher and the Big Jackpot guys that have been doing this for like a mm -hmm. decade. You know, and and I, no wonder. We, you know, now, because I see a lot of people going like, I have a slot channel and I, I try not to be a dick. Be like, yeah, like you're going to make it, kid. You know, that's how everyone looked at us. Like we oh, first yeah. came in, like I saw Lady Luck and I was like, can I get a picture? You know, and I was like, yeah. and then she's probably like, oh God, you know, not another loser trying to start a channel or whatever. Like, but all of a sudden, rather than do what I think most of them had done is just post your jackpots, you know, like, like D lucky, like everybody wins, you know, all you do is push the button and the top dollar comes up or the pinball comes up. Wow. I got to go to Vegas, you know, right. uh, so they were throwing away all the losses uh, they, and, and, and they never showed losses really until we came along. And I was like, well, that's not really how it is. Like, I think it would be funny to show just us gambling. And so ours is just us gambling and me gambling. Like I gambled before I had a channel. Like it's a fight, man. Were, were you a big gambler before the channel? I mean, I wouldn't. I don't know if I was a big gambler before yeah, the channel. You, I mean, you made owner status at M without even filming anything, and that's a big. <laughs> what, what's like this? It's a top tier at that. Do you know, you know how much you have to okay. spend? Oh, millions of coin in at least. Yeah. Millions of coin. Oh, in. before you started the know, YouTube you channel, look it up. Owner, like owner status at now it's paying. But you gaming. think you might have put a million dollars of coin in before oh, the first million, video was recorded? Oh, million. Yeah, I, I used okay, to gamble. That's like a, definitely. I used like, to gamble a lot. Like I, I would definitely get free meals, free rooms, all that kind of stuff. But I wasn't like I mean. 
nowadays we see gamblers like there was a guy uh, that EJ met with. You you tell us about that one guy, like not who he is or whatnot, okay, but yeah. how he plays. Like so, he plays um, Dragon Cash and video poker. They're the only two machines that have high enough limits for him at twenty five hundred dollars a spin, and he plays two machines at the same time. So he's sitting there like this, pressing both buttons as fast <laughs> as he can, twenty five hundred to spin. And money's just and I mean it's just crazy the way some of these people gamble, and uh, and then he'll play video poker at five thousand a hand, and he does this for weekends in a row. And, and the casino comps him. I heard something like three hundred thousand dollars of free play on a trip. Oh my god! Wow. They told him they'd buy him a Rolls Royce. Yeah, they'd buy him a Rolls one. Royce if he wanted <laughs> one. So like that is like there's big gamblers, right? I gambled. I had a, like crazy. a twenty thousand dollar credit line at Green Valley Ranch, which is the casino right down you know near my neighborhood, and and if I got completely and utterly wrecked. I would lose twenty thousand dollars in a night. So that was kind of how I was gambling before, and I won a couple times. and And I think, and we always try to tell this story, like how did it all start? Yeah. And we we look back, and I think it's I got a Delt Royal uh, on fifty cent Denom, which is a fifty dollars a spin, and it was seventy eight thousand dollars. And we filmed it and posted it, and got a lot of views on TikTok, and that's how we started. But that's not true, is it? Like, is that how it happened? I can't remember. I think it was a different video. The, the 78,000 happened before we had a channel. And the first one was when we were with Big Mike Chadwick, you and me, and we were going to Anthony's. And you hit like 16,000 or something. And we filmed it and then uh, put it up and it had like 80,000 views by the end of dinner. And then that was sort of when I was like, okay, Whoa. you know, we're in the bear market here with crypto. Maybe I should get to work on some social media stuff and started filming his play and it all developed from there. That's incredible. Yeah, it's super incredible. fun. And it just, we, I love gambling anyway. And if it doesn't, yeah. if it, and if it's not fun, I don't do it, which the last like two weeks has been not so fun. trying times. I mean, we've been getting absolutely wrecked. Wrecked. Like, okay. Walk me through some of the losses. Oh, here. yesterday we go, we go in, you know, it's like a typical day. You know, we, now we have, he has his merch that he always wears with our little tripod and microphones and stuff. And we go into <laughs> resorts world, which is kind of like our studio really like that place. And it's light and bright and the people are really nice and they turn the music down so we don't get copyright strikes. And, you know, it's just like, it's, they're, they're cool. They let me hang up my shirts in the back because I got, got to wear different shirts every half an hour. <laughs> and, and we're filming and we're like, okay, let's film this Dragon Cash. It has a maxed out major of 50,000 and a million two grand. And we sit down and we're only paying 25 bucks 25 a spin. spin. And we sit down and we, we start talking, which is kind of our banter is, is part of it. And surprisingly, Unlike this podcast, he actually talks a lot on the when we're gambling. Well, I don't want to step on your toes here. I'm kind of on a roll today. Yeah, let you go. I had my coffee. Uh, anyway, <laughs> so we're we're playing 25 bucks a spin, and in like 10, 12 minutes, we lose five thousand dollars. We didn't get we didn't get one bonus, and my energy's kind of. He's like, well, your energy's kind of kind of low. I'm like, like, why do you think it's low? Well, how would your energy? Be? Yeah. I just like <laughs> I just lost five thousand real dollars. You know what I mean? Like yeah. people say, like, oh, the casino gives you money. No, they don't. <laughs> Wait, when you say the the, the bonus payout thing, you, you, when you described it, you said it, but my brain didn't interpret okay. it because I don't understand. Well, what, you know, what like you, you said. play a slot, like the like Dragon Cash is a really popular one. We get like the gold balls, yes. and you need six of them, and it triggers a bonus, and then you know you get to spin it. Okay, so. But we didn't get anything. Like we didn't get any good line pays and we didn't get any bonus features. We just pushed the button and watched our credits go from 5,000 down to zero. And he's like, well, we can't post that. Like we post our losses, but like this video was so depressing. Like unless we wanted to like play it for like the suicide prevention hotline opposite. Yeah. You know, it's like, hey, you want to get depressed? Watch this video. We did talk about it in the next video because I knew we weren't going to post it, but I wanted to let people know, hey, we lost. You know, yeah. because it's important that people know that the whole journey and they go on it with you. Yeah, so I told them sure. in the next video, we just lost 5,000. Nothing happened. I'll save you the time. That's what happened. And then I said, post it at the end so they can watch it. And then you're like, no, you can't do that because the engagement will fall off or something that I don't understand. Yeah, watch time. Some 30-minute yeah. yeah. boring video at the end of another yeah, so, video. So Dan from Vegas Low Roller, he was telling us that there, there could be like a year-long drought of oh, just losses oh. of... Like where he's had like a 12 months of just major losses one after the other. That's yeah. Well, we're in a two week one. That's pretty gnarly. I think we've lost like 90 grand in the last 10 days, two weeks, something like that. And that's too much. 
You know, it's and and then, but the two weeks before that, we couldn't lose. We won like 140. Yeah. All right. And so, so it's well. like, okay, so is it the good with the bad? You know, like I can take a swing, like a hundred thousand dollar swing, but like I I cannot lose like two, three, four, five hundred thousand dollars. That would be irresponsible to my finances. Right. You know. What What was your biggest loss in a in like a single? day i guess 100 and, well probably that, that cosmo video yeah right? 140 000, but we got a lot of views but i don't think 140 we lost 140 000 on this one session we'll call it that's yeah. crazy there was like a video but you don't think you made enough views to make up for it i mean how many views would you need to make 140 yeah, grand that, you, one million views you would how much is, on an hour and a half video how much does that make uh, uh a probably lot. a lot is yeah. it i'm a guess yeah, four yeah. grand what? Four grand? No. Five grand? Oh, I'll say. I don't care. Okay. That video made twenty-two thousand. Twenty-two. Okay. So you guys' CPM is way higher than. Yeah. Do you know what your, the CPM on average is? is it like, I I don't know. Okay. Uh, not it must YouTube, be like twenty dollars. Finance maybe. Well, yeah. but yeah, I suppose you could do the math, but it's pretty good. I mean, we people people. I look at our comments. And I read my, the comments, you know, I compare them to like other videos that I see, you know, in this space and others. And people, for some reason, really enjoy watching us. Like I hear all, we watch you guys every day. Da, da, da. They like EJ for some reason, which I don't understand. <laughs> Boggles and the mind. It's like, it's not <laughs> just, just they're watching the gambling. It's like, we have a fun banter. Almost yeah. Like yeah. Talk, they like, they like the father format. son chatting. Mm -hmm. Like they're, they're connected to you as people, as yeah. personalities. And then our friend, uh, WBG, uh, world's biggest gambler who you never see. He's like that, that character on home improvement that was across the fence. What was it? Wilson. Or do you guys, you don't even remember that show, do you? No. no. Yeah, I have no idea. Uh, that's what half the stuff I say, because I'm 60 and you guys are like 20. Uh, but there was this show with Tim Allen and there was this one character that was the neighbor across the fence, but you never actually saw him because the fence covered him, but you could hear him. <laughs> so we have this character, WBG. So it's always the three of us gambling together. Yeah. And, he, and he's just absolutely brilliant he's like a beautiful mind kind of smart and he has these jokes that always go over my head but like some of our <laughs> audience is like really smart so right. they like wbg and then there's people that like ej and there's right. people that like my dad jokes so it's almost like a talk show format where we happen to be gambling and i think that's what really took off for us mm. is people people actually like our show we don't have to hit like a hundred thousand dollar jackpot every day because that's not be nice duplicatable though. have you done that before hundred thousand yeah yeah you've, you've the won 100 grand in a day yes. same game that we lost 140 like two weeks later we Come won 130. Back. let's go in just a single spin and it, no, no, no in a single uh like hour-long session, session okay. so the biggest jackpot we ever hit jackpot individual spin bonus we ever hit was like 167,000. What was that? That was when we were down 100. Oh, we were down like 310 we were down 300. on the one where we lost. You oh, were down 310. Yeah, we were, yeah. I, I, yeah. And then people are like, like in the comments, like, bro, just casually says I'm down 300,000. Like we had, uh, and then we don't do this anymore after the, the break-ins and the home yeah, invasions. Yeah, yeah, we'll but, get to that too. But we had like a duffel bag of cash because we like, it was a big thing. We had to keep putting cash in and we got down. We knew that it was going to be a roller coaster and we were like going until we hit this jackpot and we was not giving up. And <laughs> I had no idea, but thankfully we didn't run out of money. Actually, we had to send a guy to get more, but uh, yeah. we got, we were at one point we were down 310,000 at the Cosmo. How were you feeling about it? Like I was sick to my stomach. Go I watch was, the video and you I, can experience the sickness. You'll hear it in our voice. It's, it was brutal. It's brutal. How do you keep the energy up at that point? I, I don't you think don't. we did, but yeah. people just like what liked watching. It was like watching a, a, a Titanic wreck. sink or <laughs> right? something, you know. And then we hit <laughs> at the end. We hit the, hit the thing finally, and we won a pretty decent amount, like 160 something thousand or whatever it was. It was. I don't know and exactly. then we only ended up losing 140. Uh, Whoa! Well, what a swing, though, man! That's I can't better. believe what the audience we got a room for that. Cosmo for F1, though. So yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, it's no wonder they're like, here, have a Rolls Royce. Yeah, they're <laughs> you like, you might lose it or win it today. No Rolls Royce, us. but we do have, yeah, we have like four rooms at the Cosmo for the F1, which is going to be fun. That's, be that's, that's, that's expensive. Shout out to Michelle at the Cosmo. Very good host. There's some yeah. great hosts out there, and she hooked us up, and uh, we appreciate that. I always like it when the what? casinos appreciate our Yeah, dude. Our F1 generosity. party, bring your wine friends over. Uh, That'd be great. That was a while Could, back. Is it possible <laughs> to win like a million dollar jackpot? Yes. My Somebody won a million dollar jackpot at Resorts World like three weeks ago. On a $25 bet. And you guys we were lost. there. The no. one that we lost five grand on, the same machine. What? Well, the one next to it. Yeah. Uh, $25 a spin that hit a million. My neighbor hit oh, a wait, million. That's Did not even that much of a spin. Once. She hit it once, but somebody else hit it the same day, like 18 minutes yeah. later. Yeah, our neighbor hit a, hit a million, uh, million something, million one, million two. Was that win, I think? Win. Yeah. Win. 
She hit 250,000 the other night at Bellagio. Could you imagine? That that would be insane. But anyone who does this, I mean, this is what I want anyone listening, because I seriously don't want to be known as the guy that gets people to gamble. Right. Like, you will lose your ass if you try to do what we do. Right. Well, almost, yeah, like one, the, almost 100%. Yeah. Well, what separates you from someone else? Because I feel like it's, it's all chance. Is there is there like a, a stop loss limit? Or what's the, how do you not lose everything you have? Well, that takes we a lot. No, I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I wish. Uh, I don't know, EJ. I'll let you answer that question. I think I, we play within certain limits. We only get out of control every once in a while. Generally, it's with a group of our friends who also gamble really big. So we play 25 to $50 a spin, and we understand that every time the pu- we push the button, the math says we're going to lose, well, you know, whatever it is, $4 or something, and, and we're okay with that. That's generally close to what he was gambling before. What are the numbers you said? You lose $4 well, for... I was playing a lot more video poker. Basically, before. 80%. On slots, you end up with- it's like 8% when you're playing in high limit is the... Exp- Eight percent loss. Yeah, yeah. So if you put a million dollars through the machine, you can expect to lose eighty thousand dollars. Yes. Right. Okay. Now we have a little edge now because we also happen to make money on our videos and our yeah money comes in from things. YouTube goes out to the casino. Yeah. So so if, but if you're just trying to to do if you're trying to gamble long term and you're playing against the house over an infinite time horizon. Eight percent of the dollars that you put through those slot machines yeah. are going to be a loss, and if it's let's say video poker, it's maybe like maybe less like one or two percent. So I used to play a lot more video poker, so I didn't lose as much. So I could put a million a coin in and only lose twenty thousand over let's say a couple months. And if I was losing, I'd say I was losing on average like ten thousand dollars a month before I started filming, and ten thousand a month is a lot but i mean if you're a wealthy ish retired person with a nest egg and a good cash flow it's not extraordinarily irresponsible i mean i know people who spend you know who have ferraris or who have you know hella skiing habits or you know or people spend money on weird stuff <laughs> oh, yeah, right or like habits yeah i mean whatever the what, like, like that, what do rich yeah, people true. spend money on that's stupid <laughs> probably like that. probably people clubs. spend 10 pokemon cards, yes. <laughs> pokemon club, cards. <laughs> clubs is kind of an annoying example because they're like yeah like a 60 year old dude's gonna go to a club but like there are people that go to clubs maybe a little younger than me or whatever and but like someone said to me the For other sure. night oh you want to go to chain smokers i'm like oh aren't they that let me take a selfie guys and then is that their song? I have no idea. <laughs> I, think I, have no idea. I, like, I like this song. Like, Let me take a selfie. Anyway, I think they are. They're like a DJ, but they're also a band, and cool. they have good billboards. Anyway, and, and they're at XS. And I'm like, I'm like a, he calls me a CUDA. Like I, see a, I like to do fun shit, you know? So I'm like, oh, let's go to the, the club. And then so I asked my friend, who's a host, I'm like, oh, he's like, oh, I can get you a good table, you know, probably f- for like 6,000 bucks. I'm like, 6,000 bucks? And he's like, well, then plus tip and plus all the bullshit, it'll probably be more like 8,000 bucks. And I'm like, 8,000 bucks? He's like, yeah, but you get like four bottles. I'm like, four bottles? <laughs> like, oh, like, and and I'm, like, I'm like, no. But my point is, is people go to a club once a month yeah. and spend six, eight, ten thousand dollars. They definitely do. So, so I was having fun. Plus, I get all my meals free. Yes. Da, da, da. It wasn't that irresponsible of a habit. And now, with with gambling and being having a big uh, social media channel and stuff, it's it it is a uh, somewhat profitable. Enterprise. So, so video mm-hmm. poker is a loss of two percent. Why not just play that on the channel? Is it not as exciting for people to watch? You, you did, make my me. job harder on me over here because he'll argue that we should play video poker every. It makes video. sense, right? You should, but I it's like not. Video. It's not as entertaining. He doesn't think it's as exciting. It's not. It's not. It makes not, sense. No, yeah. it's not as flashy. It's not as visually appealing. Yes, yeah, it's just, and also it's confusing. Some people don't know what a straight is. They don't know that a full house pays right. more than a flush. They're like, why do you get a twelve x multiplier on that hand? He plays at like 100 miles an hour, so he's sitting there pressing the buttons as fast as he can. You know, the 65-year-old woman who's watching it on her smart TV at home, she's looking at it and has no idea what's going on. Right. You say so that like, like 65 is really old. Like, that's not that old. Like, I could maybe an 85-year-old woman. I well, have she a doesn't have a smart TV yeah. with YouTube on it. Okay. Well, her son probably has. So. Yeah, I have some of the nice. I met the <laughs> nicest people, like some of these fans. I like, I think, I think about the, like, the, the guy and his mom. Like, she's... I yeah. don't. I don't know how old she is, but she's whatever older than me, I think. And then he's younger than me. But they, she's like, we watch you every night on our TV on YouTube Dude, and have a I glass bet. of wine. And I mean, it's just so freaking fun. I just love and the nicest people come up, and I always, you know, 
like if people say, you know, can I take a picture? I'm like, yeah, of course. A, I love it. Oh and B, <laughs> you know, like, oh, no, I'm going to be like a dick. And I'm going to be like, like remember I'm Leo DiCaprio? Yeah. Did do, do you get women like emailing you like, hey, I'm single, ready to mingle? Uh, oh, you know, there's some that stuff. I, I'm hoping that some more, you know, reach out to EJ. You know, he starts getting <laughs> super groupies because, you know, I've, I've been married yeah. forever. But I mean, it seems I, you would think with fame would come groupies. So right. like, we need some EJ groupies. You yeah. know? Okay. We just okay. kept them off camera. They're here. Don't worry. Yeah. But it's. <laughs> But we have a cool, we cool fans. My birthday party was insane. With five hundred people show up and come and we did gamble together and had an absolute blast. The Virgin Casino here or Virgin Hotel Mohegan Casino just did a phenomenal job for my party. Oh, and, awesome! Uh, everyone came in. For, for people flew. One lady flew in from Australia to come to my birthday party. I'd Australia. never met us. Yeah, I, I, her name was Susan, and it's so nice. And it's always like the ones that are just like don't want to take too much of your time and are like really yeah. nice that you, you know, you want to talk. Then the ones that like sit there and then you're in the middle of filming and they come up and they want to talk and then they, they won't ever leave. And they, you know, they, they, they have bad breath and they like to tell secrets. Those people <laughs> never leave, you know, but right. like this lady was just like super nice and humble. And you know, she's like, Oh yeah, I came from Australia. Wow. You know, you remind me of my friend I used to gamble with and he died. And so I just came all the way for this party. I'm like, no, you did not really. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I've never even been to Australia. That's far away, Susan. And so, like, I invited her to come to like this super VIP dinner, and and I, nice. I, don't know, you made her I met the neatest bet. people in this thing. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun. So you've been in Vegas your whole life, or no, are no, you? This. Where? Okay, tell me where have you been in your uh, past? Like, where did the, well, the real estate business come? When did you come to Vegas? Start gambling? Uh, so okay, so I was born. I always, whenever I say this, I want to say like, remember the movie The Jerk. I'm always quoting movies in my. Sure. I was born a poor black child. Steve Martin's <laughs> line. I was born in uh, Illinois. It seems like everyone comes from Chicago, but I only lived there for a year, and then we moved to New Jersey, and my my brother was born, and we only lived there for like two years, and then we moved to San Francisco Bay Area when I was th- like four or five. Hmm. I can't remember, and then I grew up there in East Bay. And this because your parents were my parents lived there. job hunting or what were they doing? What's that? Like what jobs were they doing? That oh, my dad owned like an insurance agency. Okay. And, and uh, there was your know, basic good, solid family, like no weirdness except for like my mom with their reversion to fun. But other than that, it was pretty good. Fishing, holidays in the summer. Then I went to UC Santa Barbara to school where I developed a severe drinking uh issue benefit no I, I was just like that's what you did at santa barbara you surfed yeah. and you drank okay i got a degree in surfing with a minor in drinking and then after that i took that 18 month torture job in uh banking in santa barbara and then i went to orange county and hollywood and tried to make it in the movie business oh wow for a couple years. that was interesting and producing then, movies or being the actor uh well i wanted to be i've always wanted to be a comedian and an oh. actor, comedian, so you've done always wanted comedy. to be famous. So this is really fun. This new fad fame, and uh, but so but what I started in was making low budget horror films with a group of guys from Wisconsin. Okay, and they had like a boiler room esque, like a Ben Affleck. Remember that movie Boiler Room? Probably not. Like a Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross. Like I need better leads, and we would like. <laughs> Get on the phone and be like, hello, Mr. Sampson. <laughs> this is Matt Morrow with Meridian Pictures. Yes, uh, let me ask you a quick question. Do you own a VCR? And uh, like, I would just like throw them off. Like, well, yeah, I own a VCR. It's like, well, did you own one two years ago? Well, no, that's right. You know what? Everyone has a VCR. So you know what that's done? That's increased the demand for movies. So what we do is we make low-budget horror films. Tits and ass, blood and guts. You know the kind. <laughs> People like that stuff, Mr. Jones. So let me, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to send you, I mean, it was so interesting. Interesting, but I cold called strangers off cold leads and talked them into investing in movies. And we actually got four pretty decent movies made. One of them we even made money on and got a thousand screen release. It was in what? like a million to one shot. The hardest industry in the world is the movie industry. Wow. But after like two and a half years, I was like, oh, I can't sell this anymore because it's impossible to make money. Even our one that we did a thousand screen release, it was in every video store. To this day, you can find it. We barely made a profit on. So I, I burnt out on that. Is that where you kind of learned how no. to be a salesman, the salesman skills? I mean, that was as hard of a sale as you're going to ever yeah. get. Yeah. I think I learned my salesman skills from my mom. Okay. Like she did not know the meaning of the word no, you know. Oh, the no fun, but always get the <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, you. She just <laughs> was such an incredible persuader. Like, I mean, if she had her intention clear, there was no saying no to her. And I would watch her in action. Uh, you know, for example, I want. I got into UC Santa Barbara with much kind of help from her with the applications and stuff. It was hard school to get in. Not as hard as it is now, but back then it was hard. 
got in, but then by the time I finally got accepted, the dorms were full. But in her mind, college, you stayed in the dorms. So I needed to be in the dorms. They're like, sorry, the dorms are full, but there's some excellent off-campus housing. And she's like, bull there's, a, you know, <laughs> my kids staying in the dorms. And then next thing you know, I was in the dorms. I don't know how she did it. You know, <laughs> she just didn't take no for an answer. Like, so yeah. she was the best salesman I ever knew in my life. Yeah. Wow. What did you do after the movie business? Oh, I got into just all kinds of different uh, businesses like... Um, Oh my God, what else was I in? I, I started uh, a company, like I sold everything from a membership. This one was pretty pretty successful for a while, like a, a discount membership card that, that gave you cash back on money that you spent. And our, our motto was like, spend your way to a comfortable retirement. And so we did deals with like MCI and Best Buy and a travel agency. And then you got a percentage back on the money you spend and we, we ended up I think we got up to like $20 million a month and, Jeez. uh, and then like that unraveled. It was like, I, I got into a bunch of different businesses. Let me think, what are some of the other in interesting ones? Oh, oh, what? No, you go. Oh, I was gonna say one that was really fun in the nineties, there was a, uh, this thing where ever you become your own travel agent. And, and I was like, well, that sounds kind of fun. Like you get a travel agent ID card and you get upgraded to first class and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah. And so, my friend started this company and I, I helped promote it where we sold these travel agent ID cards and we got like 300,000 people to become travel agents wow. and made an absolute ton of money. But then all of a sudden like, Oh, wait a minute, guys, everyone can't be a travel agent, you know? So that kind of was a fatal flaw. So like the success of it kind of imploded on itself. We did the Bitcoin thing. We did the wine thing. Can you talk Just, about the MLM phase? Yeah, well, like the, the, a lot of those things were MLMs, you know, which okay. it's like MLM. See, it always gets brought up, but because like people will Google me, right? Right. And they're like, what did this guy do for a living? And this is, this is interesting. So I hope we still have time. What time is my dentist appointment? So, oh, you're good. so. There's this article, if you Google like Matt Morrow net worth, there's this article that comes up that says I'm worth $42 million, okay? Yeah. And I'm like, I wish I was worth 40, I'm not worth $42 million. And it's written by an AI, you can tell. Like if someone mm. put Matt Morrow gambler into chat GPT and it made up this article. And then they have all these paid Google ads throughout yeah. the thing. And, and they're just hijacking all the search. They're smart. Like some kid or some, probably some kid in Russia or Indonesia or whatever, like wrote this chat GPT article, none of which is true. But everyone's like always like in the comments, they'll be like, how does he afford to gamble so much? Like he's worth $42 million that are quoting. It must be the yeah. MLM. <laughs> well, no, they don't say, it doesn't say anything about MLM. Thank God. But then someone else will say like, oh, he was in a pyramid scheme called Vima, you know? And it's like, Ah, so annoying. But what if, what do people get wrong about MLM? Well, so like, like, okay, so MLM, like a lot of people don't even know. So it stands for multi-level marketing or network marketing, right? So there's there's a million companies like Amway, Herbalife, Avon, like they've been around forever. Uh, uh, what's the one with the essential oils? Uh, Young Living. I mean, there's a there's a million companies, right? And they're legal. They stay in business. They've been in business since like the 50s and 60s. But their whole concept is don't have a nine to five job. Just use a product and tell your friends about it. Structured word of mouth will pay you for your referrals. It's kind of like the modern day affiliate marketing. It's a, it's a smart it's business like what model. In, what influencers, brands are paying influencers to promote their products. Yeah, right. Similar before social it, media, it, pay people to promote it, is it products. Is it true or I feel like I, I have this perception it's probably wrong. Like if you recruit someone and they recruit someone and they recruit someone, do you get a cut of all yeah. those recruit? Yeah, you do. Recruits? But same, okay. it's the same thing as if like you had a two-tier affiliate. Like if you're an influencer and you get another influencer to promote Alex Earl's makeup or whatever. I don't know how the hell it worked, I but see. it's the same kind of thing. And then, so people say it's a pyramid scheme, but like a pyramid scheme or like a Ponzi scheme is like some of those crypto things, but like in a, a network marketing company, if you had a, a product, you know, alkalized water or something, you know, it's always like some story <laughs> that you have to tell right. to get someone to pay like four bucks for something that should cost a dollar. Like right. oftentimes the products are overpriced. I'm not a, I'm actually bordering now on an MLM hater. So like, don't hate on me because I used to do this for a living, you know, but, but the reason I, it's not, let's say that this product costs a dollar. Okay. But your manufacturing cost is like 20 cents. And the person who manufacture it wants to make 30 cents of profit. That'd be a great profit margin. So they have 20 cent product costs, 30 cent margin. There's an extra 50 to, yeah. cents. Okay. 
With that 50 cents, they pay 10 cents to him, 10 cents to me, 10 cents to you, 10 cents to you, and then he buys the product. And so that 50 cents of advertising money is paid out in the form of lucrative commissions and bonuses to the network of affiliates that lead to the sale. Right. It, it's just like Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola, okay, let's just, let's just say it. It's, it's not good for you, right? It's like 63 grams of sugar. Right, it's absolute crap. It's like they have these advertising slogans. You guys remember, like in the old days, it used to be "Things go better with Coke." Do you remember that? Like sure. things yeah. like diabetes, heart <laughs> failure. Uh, you know, it's like it's total nonsense. But hey, drink Coke and you'll be happy. And they they spend a bajillion dollars on ads. Right. So in Coke, let's say it costs them twenty cents to make it. They want to make thirty cents profit. They spend fifty cents on ads lying to you, telling you it's good to drink sixty grams of sugar. MLM just takes that fifty cents of advertising money and pays it out to people in commissions. That's how I used to explain it. I do not care, but it's not a pyramid scheme. Some are. Some people. Some run into trouble. I was in this one called Vima, and we made an energy drink. Okay, and I was just a distributor. I didn't own the company. I'm not. I'm not responsible. But I signed up in the company, and you buy the energy drink. You drink it. And you say, gee, that tastes good. And it's good for you. It has all your vitamins and minerals. It was like a healthy energy drink. I liked it. We still drink it today. We still drink it to this day. And uh, what happened was people started really making a lot of money. It was like a healthy version of Red Bull or Monster or Rockstar. And we got to the point where we were doing like 250, 300 million dollars a year in sales. And it was Jeez. a lot of fun. And college kids were getting in and they're like, man, I, I'm driving a BMW and I'm making money. And what ends up happening is whenever something is good, the haters come along. So the haters come along and they're like, it's a pyramid, you know, you can't make money selling that stuff. Yes, you can, you know, but it's like, we don't advertise, we don't sell in stores, we pay the advertising money and commissions to the people, the, the, the influencers who talk about it. It was ahead of its time. But someone probably dropped out of college, this is my theory, someone dropped out of college and their dad got mad. And he's like, why are you dropping out of college? He's like, well, I can just sell this energy drink and I'm making $10,000 a month, Pop. Why should I go to college? It's just a bunch of nonsense anyway. So he drops out of college. The dad gets mad, probably calls his friend at the FTC or a senator and says, hey, there's some scam that has my kid dropping out of college telling him he's going to make a lot of money selling this energy drink. And next thing you know, the FTC kicks down the door of the company and shuts them down, says they're a pyramid scheme. They're not. They end up ruining the company. They pay a bunch of fines. They're still in business to this day. And that's what typically happens. And that's why I would never do another network marketing or MLM company again, because it's a disaster. Right. Everyone ends up hating on it, but it is just like influencer marketing. Oh my God, I knew we'd end up talking about this. Yeah, it's good. But it's good, to get, it's good to talk about, I don't care. I tell people now, everybody that I know that used to do MLM, once they start, it's the hardest thing to do in the world. Imagine doing a business where everyone thinks it's a scam and all your friends think you're an idiot for doing it, Right. basically. But you have to have the, like, there's a schutzpah, chutzpah, have to have the balls or whatever to like have the confidence to power through that, still find people, get people to join and, and, and make money. If you can do MLM, you can do anything. I've had one friend quit MLM, started his own traditional drink company, sold it to Dr. Pepper for $2.7 billion. I'm going to the Knights game with him tonight. Uh, another friend, when, when Vima crashed in 2015, yeah. 2015, he's like, oh man, because he was one of the good guys in the, in the deal. He started some restoration business or something like that. And five years later, sold it for like $130 million. Wow. Uh, another guy started a roofing company and he just turned down like $50 million for it. Right. So it's like the skills you learn in that business are helpful. I now started a YouTube channel. And I think if I'm not mistaken, we have like the biggest one. Um, yeah, in gambling, the gambling casino space. gambling, yeah. That's yeah. amazing. Are, are you able to share any of the numbers behind the YouTube channel today? Uh, yeah. Yeah. What, what would you like to know? What's like the monthly ad revenue for you guys on average? Uh, a lot. <laughs> a yeah. lot. Okay, give me a range. It's uh, over 100,000. Over 100. That's yeah. what I figured. Yeah. Over 200? Not yet. Okay, so between 1 and 200, yeah. Yeah. Okay, and, and we did like, incredible. I think we did 80 million views last month. That's insane. Yeah. Wow. That's amazing. Congratulations. Yeah, yeah. it's fun. And it's awesome. Are and you guys doing like sponsorships or any? It's just it's nothing. just ad revenue. No, no, nothing like that. Because like I see your thumbnails sometimes, and I see like a stack of a hundred grand, and you're like like betting it all on this yeah. slot machine, <laughs> and and I that's led to a, a break in. You said, yeah, what yeah, happened? That was a nightmare. Uh, some idiots. Uh, like I I was I guess 
sharing a little too much information about like where we were. So I was on a cruise in the, in Croatia or something. And, and then EJ was live on Twitch, you know? So then I guess some, some guys that are watching on Twitch go, Hmm, dad's on a cruise. EJ's live at the M let's go kick down both their doors and yeah, rob their houses. Their houses. So they broke into both our houses and oh my didn't get anything. So, uh, they probably realized, well, and then, you know, now we're, you know, even more ready than we were before. And, and, uh, did you guys put like security in at least? Yeah. Well, we, we, yeah. that's something we can discuss. Keep it a we, we hired yeah, don't give it away. I highly, <laughs> There's I discourage, I discourage <laughs> anyone from trying that again. Boston Dynamics robots are ready, <laughs> ready to gun you but down. But then I made the mistake. Now I'm elected to the board of my HOA, you know, because I'm like, how can they doing that? Yeah. Yeah, I got a freaking board meeting for three hours oh, today. <laughs> uh, Cause like, I'm like, security's a big issue. You know, yeah. This is supposed to be one of the safest communities in Vegas. <laughs> We have guards. That's so funny. What are the uh, dynamics like at your HOA meeting? Are you like, uh, is it know. hilarious? It's. I think it's funny. I mean, you know, I care a lot more You're about keeping the area safe imagine. than, you know, whether someone's palm trees has like two dead palm fronds on yeah. it, you know, but whatever. I mean, I, I like the aesthetics of living in a nice community. <laughs> I got a letter like that. They were like, what are your palm trees? Yeah. Is shorter than the other or something like that. Cut it. But I mean, there's something to be said about, you know, hey, you want to live in a nice community. You got to have rules. But you, I think a lot, what I'm big on and, and what... Well, I won by a landslide, by the way, in the board of directors. I bet. Did you yeah, go when to I got elected, there was the biggest meeting. Told your YouTube channel, like, <laughs> vote for me. I need vote to get for in. Me, uh, <laughs> the I have 17 million votes. But I just think this. I think these HOA boards, these people, like some of them get like a power trip, and then, and others are just like really bored, and it's like the only thing they have to do in their life. And also, though, some of them work very, very hard. It's a volunteer position. And I just think they do a bad job of communicating with people. Like I think that when you write a letter to someone about their palm trees or whatever, just say a little more nicely, you yeah. know, or whatever. Or just like, be that human connection. I mean, just be yeah. a little nicer and a little gentler. Do, do but any of the HMA members, do they get paid or is there? No, like a, I don't get paid anything. It's all I, I answer like 40 emails a day. Wow. <laughs> it's, it's no good. Hey, goes on why, why would anyone so want to do, do that? Yeah. 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 We got game when to do. But it, uh, like, why, why would anyone want to do that job? Uh, just to, I guess to give back to their fellow humans. That's sure. why we do things. Do you think some of these casinos have become big enough that if the slot machine floor paid out 100%, they lost exactly as much as they made, they could make money on all the shows oh, and no, restaurants so. and all the money's made on the casino Everything floor. Really? It's still, slots. still all about that. Yeah. yeah. I think that the casinos, some of them, uh, like, like, for example, I've never been a fan my whole life. We've talked about this on this podcast here on this comfy couch that I've never been a fan of people telling me what to do. And I also don't like dumb rules like I've never been a fan. Of, like, so, for example, when they have these rules that have been in place back to the days when uh, Frank Sinatra or, you know, was here with Marilyn Monroe and he didn't want anyone to know about it. And there's like no cameras in the casino, you know, because this is where the illicit activities like womanizing and gambling and drinking <laughs> right. and smoking cigars take place. Like it was hangout. back in yeah, the yeah. old yeah, days sure. of Vegas. Yeah. Like, hey, put that camera away. Well, that's you know? where the camera Break that guy's from. legs. Yeah. You know, we don't <laughs> want Jimmy knowing his wife doesn't know he lost 20 grand tonight, you know. <laughs> but now everybody in the world has a camera phone, right? Everyone's filming yeah. everything. So it is dumb to have a rule that says you can't film. Now, most of them are like, okay, as long as you don't film other people and you film your machine, great job, good, you're catching on. <laughs> then like that video we did the other day at the El Cortez, great, you know, smart guy that runs that place, you know, and he's like, yeah, we'll set aside a table for you. You know, you can film table games. I don't care. It's a genius move by him. Genius move by him. Rushed. How much, how much has that? we, I, so it's I took over 10 million views. Now. I took 5,000 wow. bucks and I went, and EJ being the genius marketer that he is, we took hundred dollar chips and we stacked them up 50 high so we took 50 uh black chips and i'm and i asked some random couple i go should i bet black or should i bet red and they said black and i pushed it on black and then the, the wheel spun and it landed and it got 10 million views now everybody's going to the el cortez hoping they're going to run into us or maybe they can yeah. you know play that same roulette wheel and i think a lot of even the big corporate casinos are going to start to understand trying to catch on yeah. that we have about a million gamblers that watch us. Yesterday, I had someone come up to me at Resorts World where I film a lot and play a lot. And she walked up to me and she's like, oh my God, I'm staying here. I was hoping I'd run into you. That's the only reason I'm staying here. It's wow. like, they're going to catch on. Just big organizations and governments and big corporations catch on a little slower than the, maybe some of the smaller ones. Do you have any pro tips for, for people going to, to Vegas to gamble? Use your player's card. Yeah, and yeah, if you're coming here, um, stay somewhere where you want to stay. If you're going to gamble, don't stay there and then go gamble somewhere else. Play your primary amount of gambling wherever you want to stay in the future. 
which which player's card do you guys like the best? Like, where's the coolest bonuses mm. so far? I mean, there's a lot. I mean, it, it just depends. Yeah. Like, I don't really talk about this, you know, for less than eighty thousand dollars. <laughs> uh, <laughs> there's a lot of good uh, good rewards programs. Some are better than others. We have a thing called a, a YouTube called the Ten Commandments. You could. Vegas yeah, that's ten commandments. You could put it in the comments, probably, okay. or, or click right here. Sure, or you, <laughs> we'll you, include it somewhere. You yeah. probably know how to do that. But that I means it's a good video. I mean, I, I don't get anything from it except for views, which we obviously know is good. But sure. it, it it is like that. It's it's the answer to your question. Right. But DJ brings something out. Like people have these theories, like you know, if, if you put, if you don't put your player's card in, you're luckier. I I I believe it's a random number generator, and it makes no difference. You put your it player's card in, generator. you're going to get offers from that casino. And and like EJ said, you play at one casino. You know, you, the more you play, yeah, build the, mo the, the more you're, you know, the, the more valuable you are to that casino. So the better offer they're going to send you to come back. You know, if you play just a little bit, they might send you, hey, you can have a casino rate, you know, forty nine dollars a night next time you come, or three free nights and five hundred dollars mm -hmm. in resort credit. You know, so yeah. use your player's card. Uh, what That's else? That's really the only edge you can get is using your player's card because they'll give you free food. Like he said, it's ten grand a month that he was losing on average. It might be a little more than that now. But I guarantee you, we get more than ten thousand dollars a month of value. Right, the business overall makes sense. You know sense. what I mean? It's yeah, like that's the entrepreneurial part of what you're doing. Unlimited free dinners. Um, like some of them have hockey tickets, free Raiders shows, tickets, free Raiders. shows. Do you, do you guys have any investing tips, or uh, where are you putting your money into nowadays? If there had been a short, the Matt Morrow investment portfolio since <laughs> I was twenty-five <laughs> years old, like every single investment that I've made. Like, or not every single, most investments that I made, like every time someone tells me about a stock and I buy it, it goes down by at least 50%. Right. I mean, so no, investing tips. Well, you Bitcoin, you did. Well, I mean, right. I did great in Bitcoin, but who didn't? Right. You know, I mean, I, I guess you didn't if you bought the top of the market, you know, like when your Uber driver's telling you that they're full-time Bitcoin, right. sell. Right. Uh, yeah, next. That's a good tip. Next bull run. That'd be a good tip. Yeah, next. But, but you got into real estate pretty early? or Real estate as, as the one thing. If I had never sold a house that I bought in my entire life, like my first house that I bought for $79,000, I think is worth like $790,000 now. Wow. And I'd be getting, you know, five grand a month in rent on it or four grand a month in rent on it or something like that and be paid off. So EJ already has a couple of rental properties and I encourage real estate. So buy a, buy a residence. Then when you can afford to buy another one, buy another one. And most rich people I know made a lot of their money in real estate. What, what do you think of buying real estate nowadays? I mean, who knows? I, I'm not buying anything right now. I mean, I'd like to, but... I don't want Everyone rates and thinks are you know. waiting for rates to come down or prices? I don't know. I just okay. You already have. I mean, I have two houses and I've been tempted to sell them the last few months. Okay, and it's like just for more he, time. So you can, I guarantee you, in, less in, in 20, 30 years, them. those houses are going to be worth yeah, a fortune, so and I, you're going to have a ton of rental income. You're not going to own the anymore. equities. Look so appealing. When so, did you buy them? Uh, 2017 and 2020. Okay, that's good. So I have like below sub three percent interest on both. Yeah. I can't sell them, yeah, but just, I want. I kind of want them. to. How did you come across McAfee? Oh, McAfee, that that was funny. So, I think he like tweeted or something. If you want me to have me on your podcast, yeah. just so there reach was out. A, there was a thing. Uh, I was he, doing a podcast. Didn't he die though? Yeah, he died now. Yeah, yeah. he, he okay. was. Yeah. Okay. So I had this podcast called "What's the Deal," because people used to always call me because I was I'm good at like if I get excited Networking. about something I'm good at I'm good at making up a, uh, a present, like a, I guess a marketing presentation. Like, like I turned some fledgling wine club into the largest wine a club pitch. in the world. You're a good yeah. presenter. I, yeah. I'm good at creating a story. Like yeah. I, I, I put it out there. We're going to build the largest wine club in the world. And next thing you know, it is, you know, it's like, I'm going to buy an Island. Next thing I know I oh. did, you know, I'm going to become the biggest gambler in the world. Next thing I know I am like, I just, I'm good at that kind of thing. So I was, was, I was very well known in the business opportunity space and it was annoying because everyone would always call me with these stupid ideas. And I, and I, and I started a, a podcast because back when podcasting was first starting and it was called, what's the deal. I don't know if you can, did you delete all the episodes? It's our current channel is, so I, I privated it all. You privated yeah. them all. But, but anyway, we had it. And so if someone would say, oh, I've got this deal. And instead of listening to their dumb pitch, I would say, come on my podcast and pitch me on it. Then they would pitch me on it and I would tell them how dumb it was. And it was a pretty, <laughs> and it was a pretty fun. Like podcast yeah, yeah. For, for me but then then ej said that mcafee had put something out saying like any podcast i want to be on it you know reach out to my you know my belizean hooker wife and <laughs> and all and uh so i i we reached out and i'm talking to his wife and then we get on the podcast and then mcafee comes on my podcast and i asked him like one question and he rattled on for like 40 minutes about a bunch of nonsense that made no sense i didn't get a word in edgewise and it was really one of the weirdest experiences ever <laughs> you're like what did i just experience yeah <laughs> yeah 
It's well, amazing. Good times. I like the Andre's good. House podcast. This is good. Yeah. I hope people are interested in this. Oh, they will. Oh, they will be. They yeah. will be. You definitely have some great stories nice. for us. No, this so is, thank you. I think we this have more. more. We need to go on longer podcasts because you have so many stories. Oh, yeah. It's just insane. Yeah. Well, then, but we, we don't, don't want to do another. like that one where we went a second time and then we ran out of stuff to talk about. I feel like you can make like 10 stories out of that one story. I know, you definitely can. Yeah, well, I got, I got a lot that I, you know, I don't know. I have to, EJ always reins me in, you know, like, because you have to be careful these days what you say. Like, being a comedian, like, some comedians will say, like, you know, comedy is almost dead. You know, you got to be so careful of what you say. Do you have thoughts on PC culture? Do you think it's gone too far? Uh, I can't talk about that. Oh, uh, oh but even that's off? Okay, I don't the, talk about that's stuff. Not. Like, I seriously, because there's no... It's, a, it's a, what you call in gambling, it's a negative free roll. There's no upside only downside yeah. to talking about a lot of stuff. But I mean, I think I miss the old days. And now I'm just talking like an old person now. Like every old person since the beginning of time it's said that day, yeah. things used to be better back in the olden days, you know? But I mean, there's progress, there's good, there's bad, there's so forth. But I miss being able to tell a joke or whatever, like, you know, or and not for fear of like losing your channel. Right. So uh, I try to, try to just let other people tell the jokes. Oh, we're going... I, there's a guy that I think is funny. I don't really understand him, but I'm looking forward to seeing him live. Theo Vaughn. Oh, yeah, he's, of course. Maybe you guys could come with us. He's we have, hilarious. We have extra yeah. tickets if you guys like Theo. Theo's hilarious. You guys want to go with Theo Vaughn? Yeah. free tickets. Yeah. <laughs> okay. yeah, we got free tickets thanks to our friends at Resorts World. Uh, I like Resorts World. But anyway, yeah, they give us... So is, that, is that your one of your favorites? It's, it's, what, it's probably my, right now my favorite place to gamble in Las Vegas. Is Top three right now. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Have you seen David Blaine's show there? Oh, God. David Blaine. Oh yeah, we God. went to yeah. that. It's so, like a story so, in itself. So I can be five minutes late for my dentist appointment if you guys have time. Sure. Yeah. So, so uh, with one of the cool things about gambling is you get a lot of free stuff. You know, like I say, I'm really excited to see Theo Vaughn because I just, I've only seen clips on Instagram, but I think he's probably very funny. And another person who I just used to love was the David Blaine street magic. And I was super into sure. David Blaine. Uh, I, I tried to get him into magic when he was a kid. I bought him all the oh, yeah. magic tricks and stuff. But he I did a little bit he of did magic. Like one one or two tricks and then sacked it off. Didn't didn't get addicted to it. And uh, but anyway, he escaped. It, it was. Uh, <laughs> I was like one of those fathers. Like I was always like, oh, you like cars? And like a, <laughs> like when he turned sixteen, I bought him like a like a four wheel drive BMW three thirty five like with yeah. red interior. Whoa! Like get into magic, get a fast car. Yeah, he really tried it. everything to make him. It's like, like he, you know, one, one of the neighbors it twice. Yeah, you're sixteen. You get a BMW. It's probably a bad idea. He probably should have got me like a used Toyota. That's where <laughs> I drive now. Or, so. or then like then he expressed a little bit of interest in music. So like I bought like a, a guitar, a bass, an amp, like a drum set, like a whole thing. To, like now to you're a highly band. skilled musician. But no, he never tell, played. No, not never physically gifted at all. Yeah, that never took off. But I. I was like, ah, you throw a couple grand at it, you know, the kid could be the next Rolling Stones. Like, to me, it was a good yeah. investment. I'm not really to roll the dice. I'll put five grand <laughs> yeah, on the hand yeah. of roulette. I'll spend five grand on a band for my kid. You know yeah, what I yeah. mean? Come on, parents, you got to go all in. But anyway, David Blaine, I liked it. I liked the magic thing, and I was a huge fan. And so I was so excited for his show. So, we, <laughs> so I like, we take everybody and we go. <laughs> and and like my friend had told me it was like the greatest show ever and he gets up there and it just seemed a little slow paced for me and then he goes up with this thing and he jumps off this huge thing and he lands on a bunch of boxes and then he's like it Which seemed kind of dumb to begin with yeah. like, it's not really magic <laughs> and like the whole show, so it'd been like a half an hour already and then he's up on stage he's like oh my shoulder you know it's is there a doctor in the house? And I'm like, oh, for fuck's sake. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and so it's like another 20 minutes and a doctor comes up there and like pushing his shoulder and it pops back in. And I'm like, oh, they are really milking this. <laughs> and, I, and then like everyone's like, no, I think it's real. I'm like, it's fake. You know, it's, yeah. you had to be there, but you we, did. We had, we I'm had, pretty sure that was real because when I went to go see it, that didn't happen. No, it, it, it was real. It was real. Just the people we were with, it was just, it was one of these was times where everyone wasn't buying it and we were all looking around <laughs> and everyone else was like, we were the only, our whole row just hated the show. And so we left okay. and like we were bored and we left and we didn't uh -huh. like it. And I feel I, bad and David, I hope your shoulder's oh. better and I love the levitating and all yeah, that you, stuff. You, Incredible you, stuff. I, you missed him in a giant fishbowl for 20 minutes. Yeah, I know. I, that in too. New York. No, we saw that, but it was like, what are we going to oh. sit here and watch this guy in the water? How is he pretending to hold his breath this long? Oh, that's right. hard, man. Yeah, that, that, because we watched, I think most of it. Yeah, like, we, we, we left like so. five. out of the concession stand for a while at one point. When you call a concession stand a bar. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but anyway, good time. They, uh, another thing I would like to say for our podcast audience, 
anyone who lives anywhere other than Vegas is crazy. This is the best place to Don't live. Don't invite more people here, man. <laughs> I know there's like 5,000 a month coming from California yeah. still, but I want my houses to keep going yeah, me up. Too, me too. And also, I, again, I never can pitch anything I don't believe in. It's just like when I was starting the movie business when I was a kid, when I was like, yeah. we're going to be the greatest producers in the history of yeah, movies. Horror movies. The VCR has created an <laughs> yes. outstanding demand. We have the best special effects guy and the hottest actresses. Our movies are low budget and we're going to make a fortune. Like when I believed that with every fiber of my being, I could sell anything, right? But then once I realized that the production companies screw you and the foreign distributors screw you and they lie about how much money they spend on prints and advertising and it's a bunch of sharks and it's the hardest industry in the world and I lost my belief, I couldn't sell it. But I can sell Vegas. Let's think about this. The best dining of anywhere in the world. Like I'm going to Joel Robichon, a Michelin star restaurant at the MGM. Probably most people haven't been there because it's impossible to I get in. I've heard of it. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. Great. I get to go because I know people, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I love it. I am so not like that, but just like every once in a while in my life, like sure. little blips into the cool crowd. And I just love to be able to like go places that people can't go, you know, anyway. So yeah. I go to Joel Robichon best restaurants, but there's like a hundred steakhouses here that are better than most steakhouses in any other city in America. Every night you can do chain smokers, Theo Vaughn, David Blaine. There's a million things to do. Every club, every DJ, the weather is very nice. I mean, it's too hot too cold and then two seasons of perfect but who cares stay inside air conditioning or heating you know in the cold and the hot part and what else if the cost of living is good uh the no houses they're free free food no state income tax i mean i could go on for I sure could, uh, Everything's open twenty four seven. oh the yeah best part. yeah i, I love that too places. we were I, in arkansas I, oh. at our house there and it, we went out. We wanted to go do something. We tried to go to a gas station at 10 a.m. just to see what no, was going on. 10 p.m. 10 p.m. 10 p.m. There was yeah. nothing to do after 10 p.m. It was right, miserable. Yeah. And we're we're at, uh, we're like we. So I I decided my mom uh, my mom my wife wanted chickens. You know so so oh yeah I need chickens and a farm in case the world goes to hell in a handbasket. So we buy a farm and a ranch in Arkansas. Right. I've been there like three nights, you know, because I go there and I'm like, okay, we're in our ranch in Arkansas. How are the chickens? I don't know, probably sleeping or laying eggs or some shit. All right, what do you want to do, EJ? I don't know. It's dark on. here. Let's go do something. We go, maybe we'll go to Sonic because there was a Sonic at a town like five miles away. So we go to Sonic. It's closed. Like, we, we see a gas station. There's a light on. There's like a mini market. We pull in. The mini market's closed. You can buy gas like with your credit card. It's like that to me is hell. Now, Vegas is the opposite. The opposite. I mean, it's yeah. like it could be two in the morning. And I feel like Thanksgiving dinner. You know, it's like, oh, <laughs> let's, let's go to the pepper mill. Let me you call pancakes my... at midnight. Twenty four seven. You can do For anything. Sure. Yes. You know, the clubs are just opening at 2 a.m. Right. It's like, oh, let's go see the chain smokers. You got, I got six grand. Yeah, it's crazy to see the, how fast we're growing. So we're getting a baseball team, football team. Oh, I know. I'm going to the Knights team. tonight. I got Raiders tickets. Yeah. Uh, I'll buy A's tickets. I don't even like sports, but it's just cool to go and have Good a jersey. Thing. This is Vegas Mad on the back. Yeah. People come up. Can I take a picture? It makes me feel like I'm doing something in life. Yeah. You're just like... I like doing things. You like doing things. Yeah. yeah. So like the tickets, I'm like, why do you, you can just <laughs> buy tickets when we go. He's like, no, I'm buying the PSLs. He's bought PSLs twice and flipped them. He's like you always did. selling his tickets. How much for? Well, Cause like, I like are, to, I like to do things. He's a hustler. He just always the loves Raiders doing PSLs. So I bought the PSLs for 20 grand. And then when the Raiders were doing really well, I sold them for 55. So I made 70 grand on my PSL. That's incredible. Thank you. And then I knew someone who gambles a lot. And then she said to me, do you want to buy some PSLs? I said, oh, I hear they're really soft right now. <laughs> so I bought them for like 30 grand. And then I, I'll probably sell them for 60 grand if the Raiders, maybe next season or something, they do well. And then I'll sell them again. And then there's a thing called pslsource.com. You can buy and sell PSLs. And so anyway, I would rather get paid to do stuff than do stuff for free. Right. That's my, it's that's good, my yeah, good mentality. Yeah, get paid do, to do, do stuff. Do you negotiate on PSL? Uh, yeah. Yeah, you just make it lower. Just grind them down, you know. Yeah. It's like, come on. <laughs> I mean, that's how you make money. Like right now, we were talking yesterday about buying cars, right? So like the interest rates are higher. So if you can pay cash for the exotics and stuff, the prices are coming down. Prices are coming down on Rolexes and stuff like that. So like the you know when, whenever things get tough, like you know the smart money buys stuff. You know, buy when there's blood in the streets. Yeah. Who's that? Warren Buffett or Warren something? Buffett? Yeah, yeah. sure. Uh, you guys, you guys are wearing Rolexes. I've noticed. This is yeah. fancy. Well, they're a good investment. They're good. Yeah. yeah. My mom actually helped me get a Skydweller uh, with a blue face, so that was really cool. 
He got a Batman. That was hard to get. Yeah, that looks yeah. nice. I had a, Do you guys have any like guilty splurges that you buy? This. This was. I got this when we had a hundred thousand viewers on YouTube, and then I got this because I. This cause, is like the marquee. This thing is this whole... is how kind of a lot of it started, and just this is the kind of kooky. The things Cuban that chain. So this is like a Cuban from some dude in Miami, and it's some fancy designer. And my friend had one. He bought a bigger one. This one weighs a pound, and he bought one that was three pounds, and he was trying to sell it. And I kept saying I didn't want it. And nobody else wanted it. He tried to sell it to Bradley. Bradley wore it for a day. And he's like, <laughs> I'm not wearing that. And, and, then, and then so so I'm thinking gold, you know, the economy and the dollar's going to go bad. So you got to buy gold. And I'm like, what's the meltdown value of this thing? You know, so it's 10 carat, weighs a pound. I did the math with someone who knows the math. And, uh, and it's, it was worth $10,000 if you melted it down. So I go, I'll give you 10,000 for it. And he's like, no, I want 14 or 16 or something like that. And I said, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. Then one day he needed 10 and he sold it to me for 10. And so I just bought it kind of as a lark. Then I started wearing it. And then pretty soon it just became my trademark. So now I'll like wear like a black t-shirt with my gold chain out. Uh, and then I got the, like the a, it's I got, good for engagement. I got the gold yeah, Rolex. Sure. And so people comment, I was like, old man, you stupid Cuban chain, There's you know, and, like, comments, and then yeah. so we like, cause so the so more you guys do get hater comments from oh, time yeah. to time. I it, mean, not that many, not, not how much. Comments, yeah. Yeah. But like not on the YouTube videos because that's our core audience, but on the TikToks they'll see this old guy <laughs> with the <laughs> gold, old. the gold watch, the gold <laughs> chain gambling. And they'll say stuff, but stereotypes. Typical it's rich good. white guy. It's good, you know. And <laughs> the have... stuff they say, it's like I swear some of these people are just such angry, hating people, and they just love to hate. And I mean, here's the, you know, here's the reality. Like I, I always say, I'll go on any podcast with anyone, anytime, and talk about anything. I have never. I don't hurt people. I don't lie. I just like. I'm a nice person. Sorry, hate to break it to you. I'm just gambling and having fun. No, the casinos don't pay me to do it. Like they want to hate you. Oh, yeah. I, I, it's just dumb. Yeah. It's like you just get out of your mom's basement and <laughs> shut up and pick on someone else because I'm just having fun and trying to provide entertainment. Sorry. Right. I, I just have a theory that it's all like we're we're going through a cyclical economic like downturn. So people's emotions are down. It's mm. like. Hating is in right now. It's, yeah. In, in, in it's a bull all. market, it's everyone's having fun. Everyone's excited. Everyone's making money. Oh, it's no. fun to show off it's those kinds of things. Bull marketing, I think, as of like yesterday, right? Oh, I think bull market and what? Crypto, maybe? Yeah. No, I don't know. Hopefully. No, not quite. People like, love to hate. Yeah, I mean, especially it's weird. right now. Well, there's there's like, I used to my old motivational stories. Like you put a bunch of crabs in a pot of cold water mm. and they just sit there. Yeah. And you gradually they turn gradually the water turn. hotter. You've heard this. And if a crab tries to climb out of the pot, the other Drag crabs will down. pull it back down and they'll all boil to death and that's how like if your friends see you starting to do well they'll hate all the oh yeah well that's probably bullshit yeah oh he's this or whatever. and it's like and it's like why do that just be nice there's yeah. a great restaurant uh in town called the sunrise cafe and they have these shirts that say be kind hmm. and i used to always wear those shirts but now they're too, too big. Now yeah. they're too big. I have to go back there again. And get, uh, but <laughs> I mean, like, be sweater, kind. What a concept. Like, yes. what if there was someone who actually just was nice and just was just a regular person? Just have trying you ever to had friends in your life that they, you saw that they were different to you because of your success? Oh, yes. A lot of people. Uh, well, what I crack up, I mean, everyone reaches out. Like, when you get a little bit of fame, it's really funny how everyone reaches out all of a sudden. Sure. You know, it's like, where were you? <laughs> When I was struggling, <laughs> when I was coming up. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I was still like, I, I'm always friendly. Like, I mean, they reach out, like, yeah, let's go to dinner. I'll get a comp. Had one guy today, one of my cheap friend, Jeff, if you're listening. <laughs> I said, him out. So cheap we're going to Jeff? dinner tomorrow. And I go, yeah, I go, look, I'll get us a comp. You get the tip. That sounds totally fair to me, right? He's like, yeah, you'll probably take us to like some thousand dollar dinner that you get for free and I got to spend 200 bucks on the tip. <laughs> you can't win with you these people, win, yeah. you know? But it is true because I'm not like, you could probably go to a dinner for 200 bucks. I mean, I don't know where, but, uh, and you could go to, but we always go and it's always like a thousand bucks for dinner and then the tip is 200 bucks. So it's not really free. Right. It's 200 bucks. Right. So Jeff, you're smart. He's he's very smart with money. He's very <laughs> wealthy man. From five minutes. How ago. often do you guys go to dinner? Thousand dollar dinners. I gotta know like, this. Almost every night. Yeah. <laughs> almost every a lot. night. Oh, your food budget <laughs> per year. <laughs> I mean, I like tip budget per year. Like after hand pays, cocktail waitresses, and everything is, yeah, like probably. What do you think? If you had to guess, I mean, this is another thing. The tipping thing. You know, people go off like I give someone like a forty dollar tip on a hand pay. They're like, oh, you cheap bastard. You know, you don't tip. <laughs> I don't understand. I'm like. 
I get like 80 of those a day, okay? Right. And, I, and I lost 15,000 net. You know, like, and I got I got 20 hand pays. And if I give everyone 40 bucks, even even 40 bucks, even 20 bucks on every hand pay, I'm tipping, what is that, $4,000, you know, yeah. to someone who comes and does their job that they get paid by the hour. I mean, I love all the hand paying people and I think I get along with all of them and I tip all the cocktail yeah. waitresses and stuff. But it's like, you think about how much I spend on valet and hand pay tips and this and the other thing, it's uh, and dinner tips from comps. Yeah, it's, it's like mid five figures a year probably in tipping. Geez. At least. Yeah. Yeah, it's wow. expensive to be rich. <laughs> that was my so brother. painful. That so was painful. my brother-in-law. Recipes just died, but he, yeah, he said to me, he goes, he goes, he goes, it's expensive to be rich. Yeah, all those. And it is because, like, but yeah, we, we we eat out a lot. I mean, it's just uh, comp meals every night, and it's fun, yeah. and I like it. Oh, do you guys have any like supercars or anything? No, Sup no I keep trying to get. It. It. Which one? Are you this guys kid at? is the opposite of me. <laughs> so, like, I'm if I was him, and I'm like, what are you, twenty nine? Twenty nine. He's twenty nine. Reason. I mean, he's not like too ugly looking he's a reasonably nor <laughs> he's like a reasonably normal looking kid he's brilliant running a large youtube channel he's 29 lives in a sick penthouse in vegas and the dude drives a toyota tacoma hell yeah that's smart yeah, yeah. no i know and he's got like rental properties and he never months. goes out to clubs and he never drinks he doesn't do i would have like a massive drug problem a ferrari <laughs> that i just rolled you know i'd probably be in and out of so rehab dating six strippers <laughs> not him this kid's got a good head on his shoulders he, hopefully he can find a nice girl here in vegas i don't know they're few and far between but no he doesn't have a supercar but that, just yesterday i was saying remember yeah. that we were gaming we were with that kid and i'm like buy a hurricane value i don't know i gotta go i gotta, I gotta I go to the dentist. dentist appointment yeah I gotta keep and the my teeth. dentist my dentist is on tiktok uh oh Cat, I forget what her name. Cat Smith. Cat Smith. I see Cat her Smith on blows up on yeah. Yeah. She's <laughs> awesome. She's like does Sephora reviews and stuff. I really like. She's a dentist that does. Well, not my dentist. She's a hygienist. She's a hygienist. Yeah. That's how you uh, find Cat her. Cat Smith X. Yeah. But this was fun. We should have you guys should come gamble with us. Yeah. Would love or go to, to Theo Vaughn or something with us. Yeah, too. Be that'd be fun. Yeah. 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 That sounds fun. All right, man. Okay. Thank you guys. I appreciate you coming out. Yeah, this was fun. Awesome. Thank you for making time. Yeah, like, get your I, I can't wait to hear more stories. Well, time yeah, on the comfy couch. Yeah, cool. Thank great. you for putting this together <laughs> and reaching <laughs> out. And anybody watching, hope you enjoyed whatever Find that in Vegas, was. Matt. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. yeah. See you guys. All right. Bye. Bye. Adios.